friends, foes, and other watchers on the internet, my name is Matt, and you're watching Hogwash Gaming, and today we are starting off Monster Month. And our first game that includes monsters for this month is The Age of Sigmar. Now, The Age of Sigmar is a very simplified battle game. You have two armies, and they fight each other. Kinda basic. But each troop type has its own characteristics. You'll have wizards, you'll have monsters, you'll have just normal foot soldiers, you'll have ranged units. What's really cool about this game is you get to choose which models you have in your army. Now what you need in order to play is models for your army, then you need to go online and get the rules, which is free. I'll leave a link in the description. Then you need to figure out which troops you actually have, so then you can find the rules for them at the same link and uh, print them out. They're called War Scrolls. For instance, this is the Pack Master, so that would be this character. We have Rat Ogres, which are these characters. Now when we get started, you'll notice that both armies are rat people, and that's because that's who I use for my armies. And so I'm just gonna show you a battle between two rat people. People who are really into the lore should understand this because the rat people don't trust each other and they fight amongst themselves all the time, but that's not really important for this. Another thing that is very handy to know is if you like a certain rat model, but you also like a dwarf model and then an elf model, you can have them in the same army, it doesn't matter. I just keep this with the rat people, the skaven, because it's easier to keep track of that way. Other things you'll need is a lot of six-sided dice and a tape measure. At least one. Alright, so we've got everything. How do we start? Well, first off, you set up the battlefield. And I decided to make this really simple. And these will be our scenery. For each piece of scenery, you're supposed to roll a die, and the number that comes up changes what the scenery does. I have skipped this part quite a bit just because it makes it a little more complicated but that's what the rules say, so go ahead and roll. For this one, I got a five, and so um, it's gonna be mystical. I'll touch on that when we get there. And then this one is a three, so it's gonna be inspiring. And that adds the bravery, which we will talk about in a bit. Then someone decides how they're going to split the battlefield. Is it gonna be at a diagonal? Is it gonna be on a horizontal, a vertical? What are we gonna do? I've already done this part, we decided to split down the middle this way, and this team deployed, and this team deployed. Usually when you're deploying, you lay down one unit at a time. Now, what's a unit? Well, a unit is a group of models in one body, or it can be a single model, like this warp block engineer. So you would lay down one unit, and then the other player would lay down another unit and then back and forth until you've laid down as much as you want to. So, this side has rat ogres, and then it has giant rats, which are kind of like war dogs, and then the pack master. So, this team only has these two pieces of paper to go off of, which is kind of how I designed this so I could explain it better. On this side, I have 40 clan rats. So, we have the clan rats here, and then it has two warlock engineers. So that's, that's all we need for this team. Now perhaps you're thinking, oh, okay, um, Matt, there are 42 characters over here, and there's about uh, 14 characters over here. Um, how is this fair? Well, I don't know how it's fair. And that's a big contention people have with the Age of Sigmar. There are no rules about how big one side is or how big the other side is. Now, there are some advantages to having the smaller side because that opens up some new victory points, but for the sake of this demonstration, I'm just going to go with this. We're not going to have special victory rules. We're just going to see who's the last one standing. Alright, so now we've set up our armies the way we want them. Next, the players have to decide which character they want to have as their general. Now, a general can be any model on your team. For instance, I'm thinking of making this clan rat be my general. Now the guy over here might say, well, this guy has all the special abilities that I want. I'm not going to be throwing him into the fray. I want him staying back, so he's going to be my general. Next, we've got to figure out who goes first. And to do that, we roll dice. 
the person with the higher number gets to choose if he goes first or if his opponent goes first. Now, you might be thinking, well, why would you have your opponent go first? Well, I'll tell you. Because there is a good 24 inches plus in between these two armies. And later on, you'll realize that being the one charging in can often give you the advantage in a lot of battles. Playing right side says, go ahead, you go first. Which leads us to the first turn of the game. First off, we have the hero phase. And basically that means if you have a character or characters that have special abilities, like can they cast spells, can they add an ability to other characters, can they do something wicked cool in battle? To find out if they can do that, you want to look under their war scroll. Now, the pack master. He um, has a, in your hero phase, pick one molder unit within six inches. Until your next hero phase, you can add one inch to all run and charge rolls for that unit. And add one to all hit rolls made by that unit in the combat phase. Sounds pretty good. Um, I want to position these characters closer to um, the enemy without giving them a chance to charge me. Also, every general gets the ability called Inspiring Presence. You pick a unit from your army that's within a foot of your general, and that unit that you pick does not have to take a battle shock test. All of these terms, like battle shock tests and, and movement, I'll explain soon. Basically, the hero phase is using magic command to bolster your army and tear down your enemy. So let's go with the pack master's ability to add one inch to Clan Molder's units. Giant rats are part of Clan Molder. That's how I designed this team. Everything on here is Clan Molder. So this guy can help every other character on his team. So what he's going to do is he's going to bolster the movement of the giant rats. So we're going to put a die next to them, showing that they have an ability coming up. Next is the movement phase. And this is when you move your characters, obviously. But it's also when you'll need a measuring implement of some kind. We're also going to take a look at the War Scrolls again. These are super handy. They need to be in a place where you can refer to them very easily until you memorize them. But I would suggest having them very much on hand. And you'll notice at the top of the circle, there is a move indication. So that's the number of inches that you can move each unit. So giant rats get eight inches to their movement, but there's a way to add to that, and that's by running them. And what running does is you roll a die, and then you add that number to their movement number so they can move further. The problem with running is it usually means that you cannot charge, and usually that you can't shoot. There are units that allow that, but not these units. So I am going to run these units. So we're going to add the one inch that we already gave them with this guy's special ability plus five plus eight. So that's nine, 14. They can move 14 inches, which is a pretty amazing amount. So what we're going to do here is we are going to measure out from the front 14 inches. Now I want them to kind of like come across and attack the side. I don't want them getting in the way of everything and letting everything run into them. So, we'll take 14 inches, we'll get rid of this die because we already know what it did. And, uh, alright. So, 14 inches from the front guy. Okay, so he's gonna go there and then we're going to move everything kind of along with it. Now, when you're moving a unit you need to remember to keep all of the units at most an inch apart. They have to be rather close. It's pretty easy just to move the first guy and then kind of keep the formation and then you don't have to measure for everything. Just make sure you're not moving units in a way where they're moving farther than they really should be. Alright, next I'm going to be moving the rat ogres and I think I'm going to make them run as well. I did not give them the boost with the command ability. So instead we are going to just go their basic 
movement, which is six inches plus running. So we're going to run them four inches plus six, that's ten. Once again, we are going to measure ten inches and move everything accordingly. We're also going to run this guy because I don't want him far away from this group because they need his buffs. So here we go. So six plus, okay, Packmasters is also six. So I'm going to move him 12. So from here, I'm going to move him back here. Keep him safe. He's the general. He knows what's up. He's got all the abilities that are awesome. So we're going to keep him there. All right, so I've moved everything. Now it's the shooting phase, and for one thing, I don't have any ranged units on this team, so that's an issue. And also, everything ran, so even if I did have shooting, unless they had a very special ability, they couldn't shoot at this point. So we're going to skip over the shooting phase because there's nothing to do here. Next up, it's charging phase, and to charge, you have to be within 12 inches of an enemy. But, since... All of my units have run on this turn, even if they were within 12 inches, which they are not, they cannot charge. So we're going to skip and go to the next phase, which is combat phase. And as you may have noticed, none of my characters are in base contact with anything, so there's no hand-to-hand -hand combat going on. Remember how I told you that it's sometimes better to go second and not first? Well, this is why because you usually start really far apart from each other and you won't have physical contact with anybody so battles cannot occur. Basically, going first means you're just moving your characters in a way so that your opponent might have a chance to charge you. Which is obnoxious, but that's where the tactics come in. So, we've gone through all the phases. We went through hero phase, giving everything a special ability that we could. Um, we didn't have any attacks, so hero phase is done. Then we did movement phase, and since we weren't anywhere close to anything, and we don't have any ranged weapons, we really needed to get across the board, so we went with running. And we ran across, and that was that. Uh, shooting, we have no range, so we can't shoot. Charging phase, uh, we had no way to charge because we ran. And combat. There is no combat on this table, so we skip that phase. Now it's this side's turn. Notice once again that their troop types are different. We have the Warlock Engineers, and we have the Clan Rats. Now, the Warlock Engineers are wizards. And when I was deciding my general, I chose a non-wizard. So, this guy has special powers, and these guys have special powers. So. All three of them can do something. All right, so when you have a wizard, you have two spells that come automatically. There's Arcane Bolt, which is an attack, and then there's Mystic Shield, which is a defense. Arcane Bolt requires you to be within 18 inches of your target, which these rat ogres are just not in. And, oh my goodness. Yep, these rats are within that. So, this guy could shoot off Arcane Bolt. Thing is, Warlock Engineers also have something called Warp Lightning. And Warp Lightning works just like Arcane Bolt, except for one thing. They have this ability called the Warp Power Accumulator, which is just a fancy way of saying we're going to make this better. Basically, how you cast a spell is by rolling to die. And each spell has a minimum that you have to roll in order for the spell to go off. If you don't get it right, then uh, you just it just doesn't happen. So what this special rule is saying is um, if you successfully cast the spell, it inflicts more damage than it would if you didn't activate this special ability. That's the only reason why Warp Lightning is actually better than Arcane Bolt. So he's going to shoot Warp Lightning at these guys. So here we go. Pew. Oh, this isn't looking good. So he shot off Warp Lightning. If this side had a wizard within 18 inches of this character, then that wizard would be able to try to dispel that spell. But they didn't. This side rolled a, would have rolled a 7. 
that doesn't beat the 7 that already rolled, so that spell would still go off, theoretically. Alright, so Warp Lightning is coursing over here. Now we've got to figure out how much damage it does. And since he charged up his accelerator, that means whatever I roll off of this is a wound that hits them. And he rolls a 6. Wow. That is beast. So looking on their thing, each unit has one wound. So every wound that they suffered, one of these guys dies. So we are going to take out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now... We want to keep, make sure we keep track of how many people these guys lost because that comes in handy for the battle shock phase. So um, we have another wizard. He's not within range of these guys, but he is in range of this troop. So what we're going to do is we are going to cast Mystic Shield on them. Now I have to roll six or higher for it to go off, so let's see. Six. Perfect. All right. So these guys have a plus one to their saves rolls, which you will see soon, I hope. This stays in effect until the next hero phase. So now we only have one hero left, and that is the general. And so what he's going to do is he's going to do his command ability, which is Inspiring Presence. He's going to cast it on all these guys to say, you don't have to take a battle shock test. What's a battle shock test? We'll get there. Trust me. But that's the hero phase. Notice it was a lot longer with this side. Because this side only has one hero, this side has three. And they're magic users, so it's going to take a while. I'm going to put this die here to just show that they have the command ability as well as the mystic shield. Next we have the movement phase. And clan rats can move six inches, and so that would take them right about here. Now one thing that's very helpful in this game is the rule is you can measure at any time for any reason. So if I moved here, I can check to see if we'd be within charge range. And would you know it, we are not in charge range. Not good. Alright, so we don't want to move our full amount. Well, we could leave these guys here and just let them stand their ground. Uh, that could work. It makes the game go a little longer, not wanting to be the one getting into charge range quite. But what we're going to do is we're just going to reform, I think. So all these troops can basically do what I want them to do. We're going to reform the line. Basically, what we're going to be doing is something like this. I want to make a solid line here. And I can do that because the unit itself is liquid in a sense. Like, I can move this character over here because the idea is he would move his six inches, the, then these guys would move their six inches, and these guys would move this six inches. You know, it, it, it's basically the unit itself is moving six inches. As long as everybody doesn't go all the way over here. So you see, I just kind of move the people from the back a little forward, and that's so when we get into combat, I will have a lot of people right up front, and we can spiral around them, and just being able to move with that many units around an enemy is key in a game like this. So I know that my shooting phase is coming up, and I have two characters that can shoot. One, two. Two engineers, they have pistols, and uh, their pistols shoot nine inches. So let's just see what nine inches looks like. Okay, so that's nine inches from this unit. Now... If I move them six inches here, would that get them into shooting range? No. Okay, how about this guy? If he moves six inches towards these guys, would it be nine? Not quite. All right. So, so basically I figured out that moving these guys to try and get closer for shooting isn't going to work. But I have a piece of scenery here with an effect on it. Roll a die in your hero phase for each of your units within three inches of the strain feature. On a roll of one, the unit is befuddled and can't be selected to cast spells. Move or attack until your next hero phase. Alright, so one thing that I didn't show you is I rolled and this was a three, so this guy is fine. I think he's within three, right? Yeah. I'm actually going to move him on top of this. And why I'm doing that is because this counts as cover if he's on it or behind it. 
Now perhaps you're wondering why I didn't do cover for these guys. Well, it's because the attacks on them were mortal wounds. And mortal wounds means you can't roll and try to defend against them. So, yeah, mortal wounds kind of are the thing of you don't get a chance to protect yourself because you are dead. Move these this guy up here. Now, next turn he'll have to re-roll to see if this effect causes him to lose some abilities, but until then, he's up here, which is I think a pretty good pretty good move. Shooting, we can't shoot. Uh, it just doesn't doesn't seem to be working out that way. So we'll take a look at how far things are from each other. This guy's almost within charge range, but not quite. Everything out, everything else, totally outside of charge range. Nothing in charge. There's no hand-to-hand -hand combat, so we're skipping combat phase as well. Now, battle shock phase. Now, when it comes to battle shock, what happens is when you've lost models from a unit, then you have to take a bravery test kind of thing. And uh, that's on the bottom of your little circle thing. So, this unit lost six units, all right? Their bravery is three. Ah, but wait. This scenery is inspiring for some reason. That's what it says in the little book. So, uh, inspiring adds one to the bravery. So instead of bravery three, they are bravery four. Now, that would be great news, except for the fact that we only have three guys left and they lost six. So what happens is you take the number of units that they lost from the troop and then you roll a die. Okay, so five. So six plus five is 11. Minus the bravery. So, the bravery is four, so that's seven. I lose seven more units. Basically what happened is these guys freaked out and said, all right, well, we're, we're out. So basically, this guy took out that whole thing with just one thing of warp lightning. Pretty crazy powerful. I don't know if this is balanced anymore. Not that giant rats were very powerful to begin with, but, you know, I kind of would like to have seen them in battle. Guess I'll put these models away. It's time to re-roll to see who gets to choose whose turn it is. Alright, this side gets to choose. And, uh, basically they've got a hard decision here. They could choose to go second and get a little more up onto the deal, but they've got a problem here because letting these guys go twice in a row is very dangerous because this guy shot this unit and totally wiped it out. So giving them another turn means that they can move their guys even closer and be able to shoot warp lightning and arcane bolts and basically wipe out everything. These guys are only good for hand-to-hand -hand combat, so they have to charge. And they have bonuses for charging, so I want them to charge. So, I'm going to go... Okay, so, basically, the Packmaster is going to use his ability to, to add one to their running and charging moves. <clears throat> we'll find out if this works or not. It's, it, this might be a very short game. Alright, so, here we go. Um, their basic move, I think, was six, was it not? Yes, six. So, they're going to move their six inches. Move here. Let's see, that was there. Yeah, there. 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 And there. We're going to do something crazy in the charge phase, but first let me move this guy. Alright, so this guy has a movement of six, I believe. Pagmaster is six, yep. All right, so we're gonna move him this away. I think we can do it, I think we can do it. All right, so these guys get a plus one for their charge. So they have no ranged units, so they can't shoot at anything. These guys are gonna charge this guy. He's closer, there's more of a chance that they will succeed in that. So we're gonna go for it. We need eight or better. So there's a good chance that they will make this. There's a chance they won't. Let's see what happens. They get six, so they fail the charge. They stay where they are. However, I want to get into combat. I want to get into combat like yesterday. So I'm going to send this guy, try to get him to do a charge. 
Here's the thing about Age of Sigmar that's kind of odd. You don't measure from the base to the enemy base. You measure from the point, of, the closest point of the unit to the closest point of your unit. So I would have to get 10, which is a little better than 12. Not quite. We'll see if I can make this charge. Woo. 8. No, both charges fail. So I can take this away because their turn is over. Now it's this side's hero phase. So both of these effects go away. And uh, let's see what we can do with them. Well, we know that we want the general to cast Inspiring Presence. So if they get into battle this time and they lose a bunch of guys, they won't have to take a battle shock test. So we'll have that go. So we'll put that back. They have Inspiring Presence on them. They won't run away. Uh, this guy, he's pretty far away from the action, um, so he can't shoot them, but he can cast Mystic Shield on them. And I believe that's a six. So, yes. Alright, so let's see if they get that. They do, so Mystic Shield is back on them. And this guy, technically he's here, so... I'm just keeping him down because I don't want him to fall and break because overnight is a long time to wait. Alright, so the range on Warp Lightning is 18, so he's well within range of that. So he's going to attack the large group of rat... you know what? He's going to attack their general. So we are going to roll... Um, we're going to have the Warp Power Accumulator go, so if he succeeds, then it's a d6 wounds. And if it fails, then he gets hit with a mortal wound himself. So let's try this. Casting. Oh, it fails! Boom! Alright. This is why Warp Lightning is a little more dangerous than Arcane Bolt. Arcane Bolt, if it failed, nothing would happen. Warp Lightning, he used the accumulator to get more juice on this guy. Explodes in his face. So we're going to give him a wound. And Engineers have five wounds, so I'm going to use a d4 to symbolize that he has four wounds left. That's it for the hero phase. So now we're in the movement phase. Um, I want these guys to have a chance to charge, so I'm going to move them their basic six. Alright, so they're definitely a lot closer. Um, this guy, he's got cover up here, so we're going to leave him here. And this guy has six, so I'm going to have him walk over here. Actually, yeah, we're going to have him walk here. Because we don't want him too close to this combat. If these guys do get to charge, I don't want him in range. Now we have the Mystic Shield and that. We've moved. Shooting phase. I don't think anything is within nine inches, so our range units cannot shoot and this turn, so now it's the charge phase. These guys definitely are within 12. Let's see how far they have to roll. They have to roll a... 7. Have to roll a 7 in order to make this. Should be easy, but it's a 50-50 chance, really. A little more than 50, but here we go. 8. They make it. Alright. So, this entire unit gets to move 8 inches. It's kind of crazy, but that's what we're going to do. So, we're going to have them run in. Alright, now that everything is moved in the charge phase, now we get to do what's called piling in. I can move these units 3 inches or less to the closest model in this unit. So then we can maximize how many people hit. So right now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these guys in combat. And one of them is a champion. And it says on the war scroll, each one of them gets one attack and the champion can make two attacks rather than one. So that means I'll take six attacks for all of the regular guys and then two more for the claw leader. So it's a total of Eight. This is how combat works. On your war scroll, it'll show how much you have to roll in order to hit. Now, these clan rats do not have spears, 
they merely have hand-to-hand -hand weapons. And that requires me to roll four or higher in order to hit. Let's see how many of these hit. All right, so I have one, two, three, four attacks that hit, but we're not done yet. Now we have to figure out how many wounds we inflicted. We may have hit, but now it's wound time. So we take the remaining dice that actually did hit and we roll them again. And on this chart, it says four and up wounds. So we're gonna roll. Okay, that was pretty good. Three out of the four wounded. Now it's the rat ogre's turn to see how many wounds they saved from. So on their war scroll, they have the five plus save. So in order to save from these wounds, rat ogres have to roll five or more. So let's see what we can do. None, all three of these wounds hit. So you'll see on their war scroll that they have four wounds. So three wounds out of four. So one of these units gets hacked down and they only have one wound left. So I am gonna put it on the guy in the back. They're all the same unit, so you can share wounds. Now here's the thing, you can't spread your wounds out, they have to go to one unit. So this guy is going to be the one that gets hit next. Alright, so these guys have attacked, but in every combat phase, both sides get a chance to attack. So I'm going to take these rat ogres and move them in three inches. So all four of those models are in the fray, that means they get all of their attacks. Now, here's why I was trying to get these into combat here. We have Rat Ogres, which with Tearing Claws, they get four attacks per model. So we have four of these guys, so they get 16 attacks. And the reason I was trying to charge them is on a turn which a unit of Rat Ogres charges, they're in such a frenzied state that each time you roll a six or more to wound for hand-to-hand -hand combat, that model can immediately make one extra attack. So, charging would have been really great. Let's do this. 16 attacks. Rat Ogres have a 4 plus to hit. Uh, only 7, so a little less than half. Not terrific. But they actually have a 3 plus to wound. So, we are going to have a better time, I think, unless we roll really badly. So, let's see. Woo! We have five attacks that wounded. So now, the clan rats have to defend. Now here's something new. Rat ogre attacks have something called rend, which is a minus one to a save. So basically what happens is, even though clan rats have a six plus to save, with a rend, it makes it a seven plus, which would be impossible to defend against if we hadn't cast Mystic Shield on these guys. And Mystic Shield adds a point to all save rolls. So we actually have a chance to defend against a seven plus save. All right, because that brings it back down to six. I have to roll sixes in order to save, so let's see if we can do that. We have one save. We have four wounds that went through. Rat Ogre's attacks also do two damage instead of one. So for every wound that got through, another one is added. So each one of these wounds actually counts as two wounds. So this unit sustained eight wounds. And seeing as clan rats only have one wound each, that means they lost eight units right off the bat. Now, I would be doing a battle shock test at the end of this combat, except for the fact that we played inspiring presence on this troop. So that means we don't have to do a battle shock thing. And these guys didn't lose any units. So they don't do a battle shock test either. So no battle shock for this combat. All right, so we're rolling for the next turn. All right, well, this side definitely needs to go first because it can't afford to get zapped again before it gets a turn. So what we're gonna do is go with the pack master as the hero and the general. Um, herded into the fray gives a plus one to all hit rolls made by the unit in combat phase, I am definitely casting it on my Rat Ogres. So I'm going to throw a plus one onto these guys. Now then, hero phase is over, so now it's movement phase. So this guy has six. I'm gonna have him 
swing up here, and he is going to challenge this guy in the next charge phase. Alright, I have no ranged weapons, so we're skipping shooting phase, and now we have charge phase. So how far is this? This is four inches. If he cannot charge four inches, then I'm just giving up on him. Here we go. Yeah, eight. He makes it. Alright, so he charges successfully, and they are locked in combat. Um, Alright, and these guys can't move unless they retreated, which I'm not going to have them do, because if they retreat, unlike clan rats, rat ogres cannot retreat and then charge again. So yeah, charging is over, movement is over, now it's combat. Now here's where it gets tricky. We have two units each in combat. And I get to choose one group to attack before the other. This guy could get lost pretty easily. He's my general. He's in hand-to-hand -hand combat with a pretty nasty dude. But I think these guys have more to lose because they are the bulk of my army. If they get hit and taken down, then their attacks drop drastically. I just want to get them through this. So, we have 16 attacks, like last time. Because I still have all four of them. And there were no bonuses that gave them more. So, Rat Ogres. Attacking on plus four to hit. So, here we go. And, since they have this upgrade, they get a plus one for all their attacks. So, plus four to hit. And then with the plus, plus one from the upgrade, that's these two. So, only two missed. Now we do the wounds, and the wounds, I believe, are three plus, yes. So here we go, seven wounds, sorry. And so now the clan rats have to defend against that. They still have the mystic shield because it hasn't been their hero phase yet, and they don't have to take battle shock tests because they still have the hero's abilities active as well. They have to roll a six or higher in order to defend, Once again, six of them went through with two damage, that's 12, 12 damage. That's kind of why I wanted them to go first, because if these guys pile in, they'll get more attacks against this troop and they'll probably kill a couple of my guys. So I want to make sure to take out as many of them as possible. All right, now it's this side's turn to attack. Now they don't have to use the clan rats just yet. They can go with the warlock engineer which is probably the better move in this situation, seeing as they can't lose any more guys here, but they have a possibility of losing this guy unless he hits this guy first. So, let's take a look at the rules for the engineer. Engineers get to attack with one attack, four to hit, three to wound, and a rend of one, and damage of two. So, the warlock engineer goes and attacks, he needs four plus to hit. He gets a six, all right, and then three up to wound. He does not wound, so this guy is done. Now, we're gonna go with the pack master. The pack master has a shock prod. Four to hit, three to wound, and one rend, and three. So basically, they these guys are pretty evenly matched, which is, which is pretty crazy. So what we're gonna do is we are going to roll, so we'll roll one. All right, he makes the hit. And how much to wound? Three to wound? Yep, he makes it. And rend one, and three damage. So, Warlock Engineer has a save of five plus, and he fails it, so he gets hit for three hit points. All right, so Clan Rats. We're gonna do some more moving in to maximize the amount of attacks they get. So they have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 guys in this attack now. So so we have 11 here. Let's see what we can do. All right. To hit was 4 plus. So 2, 4, 5. Not great. Not awful. Let's see what we can do. These get a plus 1 to wound. So it's a 3 and up. And all of them wound. Nice. Now the Rat Ogres have to make a 5 plus save. Let's see what we can do. 
Uh, we saved two, we saved three of them, so only two get through. Unfortunately, that kills one guy. So he's out of the race. And it wounds another. So he's down to three. And I believe that is all the combats for this turn. This side lost 12 guys, if I'm not mistaken. And this side lost one. Now is for the battle shock phase. These guys are immune to battle shock because they had the general's special ability. These guys, however, are not. However, their bravery is pretty good. They have five bravery, and they lost one guy. So I need to roll five or more in order to lose another character. So let's see what happens. Four. We're good. So this guy's dead, and his death has not caused his friends to panic. Now it's this side's turn. I've got a warlock engineer here against a guy that has no wounds. So I'm thinking I'm going to use the war power accumulator, see if I can maximize the wounds on this guy, and uh, do some warp lightning. So I've got to roll a five or more. So here we go. Four. No, 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 this is crazy. Okay, so this guy failed with the warp power accumulator on warp lightning, and so he receives a mortal wound. He only had one wound to begin with, so he is dead. This guy, once again, is going to do Inspiring Presence, so they are immune to Battle Shock. And this guy's going to cast Mystic Shield once more for that. Alright, so that's my Hero Phase, Movement Phase. Alright, I moved everyone I want to move, now it's the Shooting Phase. So let's get this guy out here, he's well within 9 inches. So we are going to have him fire off. One attack, three to hit. Three. Perfect. Four to wound. Perfect. Alright. Rend. Minus one. Damage, D3. So, Rad Ogres defend with a five plus. But since it's a Rend, it's a six plus. And they fail. So, they take D3 damage. Perfect. So, they take three damage. Another Rat Ogre is down. Alright, so now we're moving on to combat phase. I'm going to leave this guy out for the Battle Shock phase. Alright, so I moved all these guys, and there are 15 attacks coming in. 15 attacks coming in. Let's see if any of them hit. Clan Rats, they have plus one to their wound rolls, and so we're trying to get four plus. Four up. Seven hits. Alright, and then to wound is plus four, but they have a plus one due to their numbers, so it's a plus three. Plus three to wound. Alright, so that's not a hit, that's not a hit, but these are. So we have five wounds, five saves with a five plus. Let's see what we can do. We got two saves, so three wounds. Now it's the Rat Ogre's turn. So the Rat Ogre's. There are only two of them left, so I get eight. Eight attacks coming in to four plus. Here we go. You got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six out of eight, not bad. All right, to wound is three up. All right, and they have the thing from the pack master guy. Four wound. You have to roll a six in order to defend, so. And none of them do. So four wounds go through, times two because rat ogres get that, so they lose eight guys. Good thing they're <laughs> immune to battle shock. All right, so now we've got to do battle shock for these guys. They have a bravery of five, and they lost one guy. So I have to roll a four or up to lose another one. And I did, so they lose one more guy. I rolled a six, so. Battleshock really stymied this there. This guy looks like he's in dire straits, but really, these rat ogres are really kicking butt. So at this point, I could make a decision. There is a distinct possibility that this side could win. It's a far shot, but he could. He could. Um, both of his units are down to one hit point. Uh, likelihood of him succeeding is not that great. So, I'm going to say this is a game. This is a game. 
Clan Rats won. It was very close. A lot of those spells going off really helped them. The giant rats didn't even have a chance to get into the battle. The rat ogres were being taken down left and right. This was a good game. This is really close. I didn't think it would be this close. I thought that the rat ogres, after I saw all those giant rats disappear, I thought the rat ogres were gone. They were gone. But they actually pulled through for quite a while. Um, the, the spells really worked. If I had been paying attention, some of the rules would have been followed and it might have changed the outcome. But I'm just showing you how the game is played. I think it's really fun and these were just some of the basic units. There are other units like flamethrowers, mortars, giant doom wheels. I have all of those troops. If you're interested in seeing a battle report with me playing against someone else so we have some accountability as far as rules are going, please let me know. And I really enjoy this game. Thank you for watching this long. This is Hogwash, over and out.